Thanks, you guys, for joining. Welcome to Talk Tennis. Today, we are going to talk about all things Luxalon Eco Strings. I'm so excited about this, but before we get into it, I did not write an intro because I don't think I could do a justice to either of your bios. So please, will you both introduce yourself and give me some of your backstory, what your current role is? And Joanne, we're going to start with you. Hey, everyone. Um, firstly, thank you for having me here. You're going you're gonna to tell that I have this British twang. So um, <laughs> I'm from the UK. Um, I'm from a, a small country called Wales. So hopefully after this podcast, you guys will go out um Go out and look it up because maybe some of you have never heard it. Although you did beat us at football in the US. So Uh (laughs) um, if you follow soccer, you have beaten us. So I'm the global product line manager um, for tennis balls, strings and pickleball uh, for Wilson. So I split my time between the Chicago office. That's where I report into. But also I spend a lot of time in Europe, um, obviously working with Luxalon. We we work closely with them over there. So the relationship works quite well. Wacky story about myself. I got into tennis um, by getting on the wrong school bus. So I got on the wrong school bus. I ended up, those who know me have no sense of direction. And I ended up at a tennis event. Um, and here we are many years later. Um, and I'm working for, for, for one of the biggest uh, sports brands in the world. So there you go. I love that. <laughs> wrong school bus. <laughs> okay, we're passing it on. Thierry, am I pronouncing that correctly? Because I'm notorious for mispronouncing people's names. No, no. Thierry is, uh, well, it's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit of a French name, but uh, I don't live in France. Uh, I live in Belgium, also a very little country, uh, somewhere in uh, Europe. Um, I think uh, some president called it uh, a hell all, but uh, I can assure you it, uh, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Please visit Belgium. I was going to say, I've heard it's gorgeous, but maybe that will keep people away. I started with Luxlon a long time ago, uh, 32 years ago. Wow. Um, yeah, quite a long time. <laughs> I started as a, a quality engineer uh, and worked for the industrial and uh, the medical uh, plant. As the plan, the medical plant uh, became bigger and bigger, uh, we split a certain uh, percentage of the medical plant and we kept all uh, the filament producing in uh, at Luxalon. Then I was interested in uh, sustainability. I became uh, more interested in uh, the production. And after a while, I'll... Uh, was busy with uh, R&D for the whole production. And now the last 10 years, I'm uh, specialized in uh, the part, what is uh, the sports part. So mostly the tennis strings, the well-known tennis strings. Uh, Before we get into specifics about eco power and how that came about, I have a couple questions that maybe you guys can help. I think most of our listeners are pretty well versed in tennis and like are obsessed with learning about new things. But I don't know if I even know the story about how Wilson and Luxalon joined forces or how long you guys have been connected or what the actual connection is. What does it look like? So can anyone explain that to me? Jerry, do you want nope. to store the, the backstory oh. and then I will, yeah. Because uh, yeah. I've been okay. here 14 years, so I've only ever known Wilson and Luxalon together. So um, yeah. Yeah. you can start a little bit with the backstory, maybe, and then I'll, I'll add in afterwards. Yeah. I think uh, about 18 years ago, Wilson contacted us. Uh, he contacted Nico van Mulder. Uh, and they were interested in, in us because we were um, well known. Uh, tennis string producer and uh, as Wilson is a well-known uh, racket and all the rest uh, of tennis uh, we do not produce anything but strings so for Wilson that was uh, possible a good cooperation to uh, to get together so we did have a long talks we talked about two or three years. And at the meantime, we were traveling, me and Nico, uh, around uh, the US and suddenly uh, everything fell together. 
and we decided to sign the the contract so Nico told me at, in a, at the morning, uh, okay, uh, here is my bag, uh, please go to Atlanta. Uh, we were in Boston at that moment uh, and said, I'm going to sign a contract with Wilson. So I booked uh, an air ticket, uh, an airplane, and uh, I'm flying to New York. I'm going to sign there and I will see you in Atlanta. And so I was there with uh, three bags and my, my backpack and everything. <laughs> I went to uh, Atlanta, visit uh, the client, uh, had a very good uh, contact with uh, the client and they are still client with us now. And when he flew back to me uh, in Atlanta, we were also uh, had a cooperation with uh, Wilson. And that's maybe something uh, Joanna will tell you about how do we cooperate. Yeah, so we... I mean, like like uh, Thierry says, it's been a long time. It's been a, a long relationship um, through Wilson and, and Luxalon's history, and and at that initial conversation, I think that the brands work very well together. They they work. Um, obviously, we we have a line of strings, but it's more down the multi filament uh, side of it, and mm -hmm. and then we have the experts when it when it comes to Luxalon. And then you combine the top pro players, you know, those top pro players are, uh, are using a lot of Wilson rackets and then Luxalon strings. So marrying those two brands together um, has been great. And then also Wilson's distribution is is very global. So it, it allows Luxalon as a brand to become a very global brand, um, you know, across the world. So, um, yeah, we've we've had uh, many successful years and I know, I know uh we'll we'll be tied in partnership for another um number of years so uh the the, the relationship will, will hopefully i would love to say forever um mm -hmm. but for definitely for the very new future and and we're, we're really lucky we myself and thierry probably speak <laughs> speak every day and we have a good working relationship and a, and a fun working relationship as well i think that's important that, that a group of people um get on and i think both teams uh both teams uh, celebrate together um, and enjoy each other's company. So yeah, it's been a good relationship. Nice, that's awesome, good to hear. And you guys were just at the US Open and tell me a little bit about some of the stringing that went on. Is there's anything, any new trends that you saw? Give me all the details that you can share with us. For you, anything, so. <laughs> <Thanks>. um, <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, uh, I think it's a, a new record. Obviously, we have two Grand Slams in US Open and Roland Garros um, and 7,000 rackets strung. That's crazy. US Open this That's year, a lot of rackets. Which is is a lot of rackets. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's busy. We think that's a record. It's certainly uh, Roland Garros was around six seven something like that. So we hit that seven, we hit that seven thousand, wow. and then in one day, five hundred seventy seven rackets strung in one day. What day was that of the tournament? So the day before main draw. Okay. Um, started so end of qualies and stuff. So yeah, an insane amount of rackets um, <laughs> in one day, and and the team there's 22 stringers. Um, from 11 different countries um, that are on the string team. So, and then all the other support staff that come around that, you know, um, Ron, Joel, um, just to name two, and then all the people that check in, you know, not forgetting all those guys, the runners then between the courts. It's just a massive operation. For those that maybe haven't been to the US Open or haven't seen it, there's two locations. Um, there's a location directly under Arthur Ashe, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically right by the court. Um, that's where uh, I'm going to say, Thierry, would you say there's about, I don't know, 16 stringers in there, maybe 15, uh, 16 in, in that area. Yeah. And then on in the in the Wilson store, which is outside, which is by Louis Armstrong, there is um, we have like a balcony and we have some additional stringers up there as well. So. Wow. It's over two locations. Um, so, yeah, it's just grown and grown and grown. I mean, it's a crazy amount uh, of strings. So from a trends perspective, I think um, it's interesting because everyone's like, oh, the, the, the string tension is dropping. Yeah. Um, it, it is to a certain degree, but then you'll all of a sudden get a wild one that will be so high, for example, with 4G, um, this player strings with. So 
string tension is dropping slightly. Also, gauges, players are maybe going a little bit thinner. Mm-hmm. Um, that's another trend that we've noticed is is thinner. Um, together with the hybrids are still out there, but maybe there's a different setup of hybrids mm-hmm. versus the old traditional that we would have seen back in the day of, of maybe a poly and a, and a natural gut. Maybe that there's a different setup from a hybrid perspective. So those are trends we're definitely seeing tension, thinner strings, um, and then um, just the overall setup of, of how rap players are getting it set mm-hmm. up. Um, but yeah, you know, when when players, it's interesting as well when you sit there, players all sometimes want the same stringer. You know, it's lucky they don't want to change from the same stringer. Um, even though the machines are all calibrated exactly the same, mm-hmm. you know, and they all string in the same way, it's it, it's interesting when you see them coming in and they they've had their their lucky stringer, I guess. So um, <laughs> yeah, it, it was it's definitely been interesting. Um, this just in terms of volume. And like I say, just some some new trends and mixes coming out there. Nice. And we, I mean, as tennis geeks, like are obviously a little more like aware of things. But even I know Sabalenka had a moment where she bounced a racket or she was trying to hand a racket off to her team and kind of bounced it away. Um, So I and there was another player that definitely was getting rackets restrung in the middle of a match. So it it was like kind of a small little storyline. At least I saw it. So yeah, that's cool to hear. Yeah, I mean, some players, you know, the stringers can get the rackets done sometimes between 50 and 20 minutes, you know, to get them back on the court. Mm-hmm. Um, if there's a if there's a long, you know, that that you don't have that change of ends necessarily anymore and there's that long period at the start of a match or as they go slightly deeper if, if it's a men's match and it's over five sets. So, yeah, the, the players were definitely – I think the conditions in New York were so different this year. It was so humid. Um I know that maybe the courts are playing a little bit different um, than they had in previous years. So mm-hmm. those factors in, you know, and, and then the string becomes even more important if the conditions are slightly different and how often maybe they restring or, or want it changed up or it's more humid than they thought. And then also, I don't know if you saw as well, like part of the roof was closed mm-hmm. for some of the matches because of the heat. So Again, all those things, you know, may change the player's decision about wanting to get it restrung. So the, the string has got to be, got to be ready and waiting for sure. So, and I don't think I'm misspeaking, but you and you can confirm because this is your category as well. The women started using the same ball as the men at this U.S. Open, so I yeah, don't know if that played any part into many more restrings or not. I mean, the ball. So. Um, the easiest way I can describe the two different balls is one is extra duty and one's regular duty. So if you think about it from a string pattern, um, an extra duty ball um, is like a uh, 16 by 90 string pattern. So mm-hmm. It's a little bit wider. Mm-hmm. The, the, the felt is and the fibers are a little bit wider. And then a regular duty is like an 18 by 20. That it's a little bit tighter. Mm-hmm. Um, so that basically means it will travel through the air. In terms of differences in, in spec, they're very similar. It's just how tight that weave is on it. Um, and, yeah, I think, you know, the decision was made by the players were consulted. You know, it, it's never been at Wilson's decision which one they choose. We, we're just happy to service the U.S. Open. And, again, 45-year partnership, I, I'm sure you saw this year. So it, we just then work with those guys and they say, hey, we're going to go extra duty this year with the women's um and then one of the other changes we made was they went from a three ball can to a four ball can. Mm. I don't know if you saw that. No, I so didn't they see went, that. They went to that because um, then to, to not send in as many balls. Um, and then also we took the labels off. So there was no ca- labels on the cans to then reduce on waste, no overcaps either. So, um, so there were some cool changes, not just the ball, but but just to the can in, in general as well. So Yes, it could have played because the the I mean the the players will have had the balls before mm-hmm. to to practice with um, etc. Um, but I think just overall general um, conditions there was there was a lot of variations going on this year compared to a, a normal uh, 
U.S. Open at that time of year. That's awesome. Good to hear. And you always explain things so well and like it's easy to understand. I always reference we had a chance to chat with you and we did our ball deep dive and we still talk about that conversation like probably once a week. So thank you for making it's my British accent. It, it might it be. <laughs> it might be. But we're going to jump right into something else, which is the string that I am excited to talk about. Um, but it's been very clear that Wilson has a sustainability story and they started telling it years ago and with, we saw the Trinity balls and everything else. And so now you guys have come out with Luxlon, Eco, Power and Rough. And this is the coolest story. I don't even want to like explain it because I will probably mess it up. But as far as I know and what I keep telling everyone, it's made 100% from recycled materials, all of it, including the packaging, everything. Plus, it's a good plain string. I really like the Eco Power, and I'm gonna let you guys take it from there. How did this concept come about? Explain how long you've been working on it, and we'll we'll just start there. I think uh, it started quite a lot of years ago, uh, especially at Luxon. We are always uh, involved in in sustainability. Uh, when we built our new factory, we we built uh, we built it with the idea: okay, how can we make our factory more sustainable? How can we reuse the heat of the machines? How can we um, use some electricity, like solar uh, panels? We have the uh, one thousand six hundred panels on uh, the roof, so we actually make uh, all our tennis strings with uh, the solar po wow. power um we were always busy with this and a few years ago um we were following some trends and we saw yeah sustainability is a keyword for the younger generation mm -hmm. and you saw it uh really coming up from the young people uh telling the older people okay this is a, a very important thing and this is going to be even more important in five years and in 10 years uh so um also the the tennis balls uh, with Wilson uh, the Trinity was uh, starting to come uh, we were thinking about we were talking about these things so uh, we looked at the market and said okay how can we uh, jump on this and, and how can we produce a, a sustainable string uh, we talked to Wilson and they say okay this is a, a good idea so, but to come from an idea to an actual product, it's uh, not that easy, <laughs> especially if, if, if the material is not there yet. Uh, so about four years ago, we start uh, looking at the, the market and see what kind of uh, raw material was available. Uh, because it's very important for us to keep uh, the properties of the string. It has to be a Luxlon string, so it has to be very consistent, it has to be good, durability has to be there, playability has to be there. So we uh, talked to a few raw material suppliers and we found one uh, was a small lab and could start producing a, a recycled material for us. After a while uh, we saw that the, the PET bottles was a, a good uh, source there were a lot of PET bottles available. Uh, it was also polyester mm -hmm. based, so easy to use for us. Uh, but the problem was uh, we couldn't make it uh, very durable. And the difference between one lot and another lot was always too big. So we uh, upscaled and we went to a uh, a 100 kilogram scale batch in the lab, so 200 pounds around that, to a, a 7,000 kilogram, to 14,000 wow. uh, pounds. Uh, uh, that that's the way we could uh, easily get the consistency in our in our product. And we were lucky. Uh, we were using um, uh, polyester-based materials. It's a little bit difficult, but uh, 
A polyester based material we, we make like a uh, condensation uh, polymerization and so that means we can uh, reuse the material a, a few times and we can um, add some additives to it to get the correct properties we want in the raw material so it took us a few times a few times seven thousand kilograms <laughs> <laughs> uh, but at the end, uh, we managed to have a playable string. And at that moment, we, we went back to, uh, to Wilson and said, OK, here is the first string. What do you think about it? And then we start play testing with Wilson and, and testing again and put it on our robots. We have these kind of robots who tennis all day. <laughs> <laughs> And that's uh, not me, it's, it's a general uh, robot, it's not it's, me. It's really, it's really a robot. <laughs> I think some people think that's what I do all day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we changed it quite a lot, uh, but at the end we got the uh, Allo Power uh, Eco uh, ready. In the meantime, we also thought, okay, we, it's very good to have a, a sustainable string but something in the package has to be done all also we were already uh, changing packaging from uh, a normal uh, uh, carton uh, paper with a foil on it and then plastics on it and we dropped the plastics we dropped the foil we start printing with uh, with uh, biological inks and then we thought okay how can we reduce uh, the paper so we came with a special shape uh, we reduced uh, the paper uh, more than 50 percent mm -hmm. so and not only because we reduced the paper we could uh, pack more um, strings per standard volume so that means we ship less air mm -hmm. which is also uh, a very good uh, sustainable thing if you look at the life cycle analysis uh, if you can uh, ship twice as much strings in the same volume you also win a lot of things That's so awesome. first string was there the allo power uh, the sorry the luxalon uh, uh, eco power and then uh, of course we started to think about uh, how we can um, do something more and we said okay we have a power maybe we can go to rough and, and see what what we use in other families so we talked again to uh, wilson and said okay which string should be a next string in, in eco and then uh, we went to the eco rough um, eco rough same basic material as the the, the eco power uh, we uh, make it rough on a different way than the allo power rough so the allo power rough is uh, with a diamond dent in it the eco rough is now uh, with a line yes maybe you can see it mm -hmm. you can feel it <laughs> so and it's not only the line that's different the the shape of the strings also a little bit oval we try to make it uh, a little bit different than the allo power rough uh, the there's more surface on 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 the when the ball hits uh, the string bed because the oval the ovalness so that gives it a little bit more uh touch on the ball a little bit more spin nice Awesome. Um, we actually have play tested these ourselves, but we've also conducted a message board play test. So there's been people all over the country testing these strings and the, the feedback has been so positive. And we've also asked them to help generate some questions for you guys. So I'm going to be asking some of those today. But I think even from my team, where would you guys fit these in the Luxlon family and how would EcoPower 
correlate to ALU or ALU rough against eco rough? Where, how do they fit? Who are these strings for? We'll start there. We love a segmentation kind of story. Yeah, so I mean, I can touch that. So basically, obviously, we have families. We have the Ali Power, the 4G um, element, and then we had Adrenaline and Savage. Um, I think one key thing about Eco is it's a standalone family on its own. Mm -hmm. So it it has unique properties that um, we uh, and different technologies versus an Ali Power. So we want it to stand alone. Um, And to Thierry's comment around. the difference between Ali Power and Rough and Eco Rough. Hopefully now the listeners will know that they're, you know, completely different um, finishes on the string and, and how um, the process and you you will get a, a slightly different playing experience. So that was one important um, thing we wanted to do. We really wanted to make sure that Eco kind of didn't drift into other into other families. Mm-hmm. Does that say in the future it never will? I'm not saying it will or it won't, but maybe um, it, it could do because um, there could be an opportunity there, but we really wanted to look at it. And and then I think one of the the, the second most important, it's all about the playability of, of the eco power and the eco rough. Mm-hmm. We, we know, I think we all know, uh, and I would say respect Luxalon, you know, out in the tennis world of, of how well the strings play. Um, we know that a high percentage of, of professional uh, players use them and um, not just Wilson players, but other players from all the other brands and all the other sports. So, you know, we know we wanted to keep that quality and that performance has to be there with with the likes of, of Luxalon. And, and I think um, that's something that, that Luxalon do exceptionally well. They, the performance remains uh, and to use it with a recycled string um, element behind it, it, it I, I think it, it sends a great message um out there so yeah to answer your question we we kind of want to make sure that eco is isn't thrown in and compared it's a standalone string it, it's out there for the people who maybe um have tried other polys who who want to switch to a poly who want that 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 um shaped string um from Luxalon um, that maybe we haven't had in the line before or they're not so aware of maybe a Savage or, or something like that. So, again, it's really going after those club players who who want that little bit of extra help and, and want to use that Luxalon brand. Um, and maybe, you know, the Ali Powers of the world or the 4G is too, too uh, stiff for them. So I, I think the, the Eco family makes a, a good option for that player out there. For sure. And then, of course, we always have to ask because everyone wants to know, do you guys have any pros testing this or planning to maybe make a switch? Or was any anyone on, that you can speak of part of the playtesting process? I actually have something exciting for you guys. So I think oh, this boy. is a little bit, I haven't even told Thierry. <laughs> oh, this. man. Um, so, yeah. So Ma- Mary, who works um, with Wilson in, in with myself and, T- and Thierry, she also works in the string room. Um, so I get a very excited message from Mary one day at the U.S. Open that there's a player, um, uh, a male doubles player, reasonably high in the world, who's using Eco Power. Nice. Okay. In his string. So she's excited because when you're involved in, in Thierry Love, because we know Mary, it's like she's been in, involved in the process. And so to see that come to life and a pro player be using it at a Grand Slam is is, is fantastic. Um Play uses another racket brand, so it's it's not uh, with Wilson, and then also a junior a junior world junior world number one. She's a Wilson player who's playing at um, at the U.S. Open. She was also using it. So we have a wheelchair player using it in a Grand Slam, um, and then a doubles player. So That's awesome. it's made it onto tour, um, which I think's great because. Um, you know, I know there's always that. Hey, it's recycled material. Will the the top players use it? So, yeah. Um, so, Thierry, it's for you to know as well. Sorry, I didn't tell you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> no, it's... it's <laughs> good news, though. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's... yeah, it's good news. Especially if the, the strings are, are not made for them. It's... Uh, it's we, we, we're not aiming to the top 100 or top uh, 500. So for us, it's very good that these people are also interested in, in the string and, and are testing it or playing with it even. And I think 
more and more uh, people in the, uh, tennis players in the, in the in the top 500 are interested in in sustainability and if i see to uh, to the wta or atp also there there's uh, interest in in sustainable things yeah, in balls in in, st in strings in in clothing in in the use of uh, of water uh, even so in the future you will see more and more people playing with it and i have to mention it's a very nice price point also it's gonna be like an easy one to just throw in the cart and give it a go and like i said from everyone that's testing it i think some people like you said they might have some hesitation hearing recycled materials in my racket uh, we've tried it in apparel and Eh. Oh, but it's, uh, it, the playability is it's it's awesome and I personally really liked it and I actually had mentioned some of my parlay pieces from Adidas which is the recycled PET um, it almost gives me like the same thought and I like that feeling in my string bed so like I found really nice control but still good pocketing and it kind of like not that like I'm overthinking it, but I probably am as a tennis player. We do that. <laughs> but it's like you almost can like envision the the way that like all these materials had to come together and then be pushed back out to create this string. And that's just pretty cool. And then the color, it's like this amazing color blue. And you're like, am I saving the world? We were joking. Save the world one forehand at a time. I mean... <laughs> That's a great tackle. <laughs> that you can yeah. thank Jonathan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's really cool. So I, I appreciate what you guys are doing. And then I guess from there, uh, Thierry, you did mention it took a minute. And I don't know if our listeners really understand that it can take years to come up with this. And can you share how many prototypes you tried? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I can share with you, but I don't really know. But uh, more than hundred. Oh my gosh! At least can I mean yeah. like, and then like think if our listeners are thinking more than a hundred, and you if you get your racket restrung once a week every year, that's your that's a lot of strings to try. <laughs> and also your arm aches yeah. after a while. After you have to go out, how it's terrible. when Thierry sends me a, another package. Another, You're like, another make it stop. My husband as well. My husband is like, stop. Stop with the deliveries, Thierry. <laughs> oh, man. And like also, yeah. okay, keep going because that's insane. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it is like Thierry says, it's close to 100. We then narrow it down. So as well, when you're testing products, it's the color. You mentioned the color, mm -hmm. right? So as soon as a different color comes into it, affects playability, you know. Um, so even just on one color, we maybe change things slightly. And before you know it, that's another 10 prototypes. Or, you know, you go a little bit darker in color, lighter. So there's a lot goes there's a lot goes into it. And like Thierry says, they use a robot at Luxlon. We then obviously test um uh, in a small group and then we expand it out. So mm -hmm. then that testing then goes worldwide as well. It's important that that testing is done worldwide. It's important the testing is done to the consumer that we're trying to trying to um, reach and get their insights and feedback and how they feel about it, um, you know, what they're looking for. And even packaging, you know, packaging is, it's, it's, different you know you guys you're so massive online if if i sent in no packaging you guys would be like joe you've gone crazy what are you doing and but maybe a stringer in a store doesn't want to be ripping off packaging so how do we make that balance between you know someone like you guys who do such an awesome job for us and then also maybe a, a stringer that is is doing a lot of rackets and he doesn't he just wants maybe a few sets that look pretty on a wall, mm -hmm. but then the rest of his sets come with no packaging. So even the packaging went back and forth, probably, I don't know, 25, 30 times to decide on yeah. shape, you know, just shape. Don't think of anything else. And, you know, you go into the Chicago office and we basically take all the prototypes of, for example, packaging and then the color, how it looks. So we dress a wall and how that looks. And then we have people come past from, from other be used as well because obviously we have the baseball guys that the uh, team sports so mm -hmm. maybe they see something different because mm -hmm. we're close to it mm -hmm. um and yeah so it, it it's a long process it 
it doesn't quite happen overnight. I wish it happened <laughs> overnight, but it definitely doesn't. Well, that's cool. And then I also was going to mention you know, you were talking about how this is uh, recycled materials is an important story for the next generation. And something else we're seeing that's super important is the influence that people have. And without being too obvious, you guys are clearly leading the way here in influencing, I would assume, the market. And I can only imagine that in the next few years, hopefully we will have more options like this to choose from. But maybe you guys can talk about kind of leading the industry and just kind of, I don't know, that's that's really cool because I have talked to other people and I've asked like, oh, you know, look at what Luxalon's doing. Is it coming from you? And the first thing that you mentioned is having the materials and that to have the, it, the wherewithal to like have started doing that years ago and being able to produce this and have it out on the market today is, is very important. So talk about your influence as a string brand. I think for us, it's, it's always important to, to, to bring a good string on the market and to be a leader and it's it's not always easy it takes a lot of time uh it's very satisfying on the other hand to bring uh new products uh, on the market and then see two three years later that the market is following you and i think i think it still is at this moment that that we bring uh uh, strings to the market and a few years later we see uh, things happening and I have for example the eco I'm I'm pretty sure brands will follow uh, this trend we've seen it uh, we brought uh, a few years ago uh, a, a smart string or a soft strings on the market and uh, besides the string for us at that moment was the most important thing to uh, uh, get a lower tension in your racket. And if you see now the trends, even in uh, at the US Open now, uh, it's, it is going down, mm -hmm. tension is going down. So looking back like five, six years ago, when we started to talk about this, it works. Uh, people still listen to us. So <laughs> I think we're still doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> on the other hand it's always the longer you do this the harder it becomes it's so research and development you can first it's very easy but at the end it becomes more and more difficult i think look at your cell phone like an iphone started iphone one now we have iphone 15 you can still call with it and read a screen with it and you can take pictures with it the picture a little bit better and you can do a little bit more things and the battery is a little bit better but really really big changes are always very difficult mm -hmm. and we still try to make these big changes and i think that's important for us i think with luxon as well you know thierry spoke about the start the things they do around the factory um he didn't mention they have bees on the roof as well and you know for the environment yeah. and they produce honey and you, you go there and, and people are using the electric carports that they've installed outside you know, the factory. So there's there's a lot of things that, that Luxalon do. And, and I think hopefully, and I really, really want other brands to, to come out with this type of, of string, you know, because I think it's important for us as brands um, that we're all working towards a common goal. We know that the waste uh, around a sport like tennis can, can sometimes be high. So, Every little thing that we all do as, as different brands, collectively, that adds up to so much. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's exciting to see. And, and hopefully with with things like it being used on tour and, and, and players believing in it of that level, you know, then, then people start to have a different perception of you can produce a recycled string um, that is used at the highest echelons of the game and then all the way down to the people starting on their journey. Definitely. And I was going to say, of course, that leads to the question, what's next? Because obviously you guys are leading the way. So is there anything you can talk about that's on the horizon that we can expect? But you can also be super secretive and keep it quiet. But I know you're working on something. <laughs> <laughs> you know me too well already, Michelle. I mean, you know me too well. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> yeah, like we're always looking, you know. Um, we we have a glide path that goes out to, to 2030. 20, I've just been in, in a meeting that is looking at 2024 and we're already in 2026 or 2027 as as product managers um uh, and together with luxon or in all our other categories so all i would say there's more exciting stuff coming i think like i say when you look at a brand like luxon they're trying to innovate do things differently and then the same with wilson you know we're looking at uh, what's the next big things and studying trends and um so yeah there's 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 more to come there's more to come can I bounce back to the ball question also, or not yeah. <laughs> literally bounce back? Wow, I didn't even mean that one. Wow. Uh, <laughs> we get asked a lot, um, and I'm sure you do as well, but balls have, a lot of people want to recycle the balls, and there are, um, there are places that do offer kind of like that collection and they will pick them up and recycle but i don't have any locally around me and i know we get again a lot of questions on this trinity was a great introduction into the market for this recycled option and now there's a trinity pro is there anything further that you guys are working on with the ball waste issue if that is even an issue right now i mean i think it, it might be yeah yeah, so yeah. We've, we've done a couple of things. Um, so obviously Trinity was the start of it and, and we're looking at what's the next version of Trinity and, and how does that evolve? Because I know there's there's some big fans of Trinity. Mm-hmm. You know, They've really bought into it and, and they love the idea of, of being able to use the ball for longer. Um, it plays well and, and, and the packaging. So we're, we're trying to see how we evolve that family. Mm-hmm. Um, I touched on it before. You know, we came out with the eco overcap you know so we took out the 50 percent in yeah. the middle um which reduces a lot of waste um on that and then also something we've done on our tennis ball cans we've added in an additive into the can okay. so when it goes into the landfill um it biodegrades much quicker um than it would normally if it goes into it without creating microplastics as well um that's been in our tennis ball cans for roughly about a year now okay um so that's in the tennis ball cans and also the overcaps as well um we're working you know on other ways we can use that that type of additive but that's in our tennis ball cans and then from a recycling um we've got some initiative we worked previously with recyclables and we still have a relationship with those guys uh taking that 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 tennis ball that's put in the waste it gets ground down etc and then um, put it back into a tennis court or a facility that it can be used. So, but like you say, it's making sure there's enough of those drop-off stations, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, around, around, you know, not just the U S but around the world. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, cause I know in, in, in Australia where you guys also, uh, are very, um, big and very prevalent, they have a, we have a relationship over there, um, with a, a company that does it in Australia. Oh, nice. So yeah, again, it's small changes of stuff we can do. Um, I think changing for the US Open, you know, the USDA came to us like, hey, what what can we do? Um, because a lot of balls are used at the US Open mm-hmm. as well, you know, or a Grand Slam. So taking the labels off the cans, you know, that's a big thing mm-hmm. because when the camera zooms in now, it's just a plain plastic can. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have the Wilson branding on it. But for us, it was it's an important message and taking the overcap off as well, you know. If you're sending in 40,000 cans... That's a lot of savings in terms of of waste. So, um, and again, shipping to to Thierry's point earlier about you know changing the packaging on the um, tennis ball string, uh, tennis strings allows you to ship more in a master carton. So you instead of you know we increased it with something like seventy seven percent on strings, right from 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 um, Luxlon to, to Wilson when they ship it into us. So that's a big increase in number of strings. So by changing from four balls to, to, sorry, from three balls to four balls, again, you're shipping less cartons around, you know, across the U.S. for the U.S. Open. So, again, small changes um, that hopefully, again, it's 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 all of us as brands, I think, with the tennis balls, um, uh, what we can do. But, yeah, we're, we're trying our hardest uh, daily because we know that's, that's uh, something that the, the consumers want to see, want to see changing as well. 
And then back to the string real quick, because this was my question, because around here, there's a lot of string, there's a lot of cutout string, and from what I have learned is the string in your rackets cannot be recycled to the point where it, like our recycle bins say no string. <laughs> Can you throw this string, once it's broken, out of your racket into the recycling bin and can it kind of go back through the process? You can, you can for sure you can recycle the, your string. Um, and I, in Belgium, you can just throw it in your recycle bin because it's polyester based, uh, it, it's perfectly recyclable. I know in some countries you can't do it. Um, the problem for us to recycle a string is it only weighs 12 grams. So even at, at the US Open, 7,000 strings means 70 kilograms, it's about 140 pounds. You can't transport 140 pounds of strings to Belgium and then recycle it. That's, if you look at the life cycle analysts there, that's not a sustainable thing. Mm -hmm. So you can, uh, it, it's absolutely recyclable. So you can throw it in the recycle bin and if it's allowed, they will just use it. Uh, yeah, I think one of the, they're always one of the biggest problems, this. sorry, is, is that when it's a no. hybrid, mm -hmm. so if you have a natural yeah. gut, mm -hmm. so when it's a mixture, mm -hmm. so, and, and, Back to my point about packaging, you know, stringers aren't going to stand there and split natural gut, multi-filament, mm -hmm. polyester out. So if it's a full bed of poly, then it's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. But if it's uh, if it's m m mixed, it becomes difficult. But strings have been used um, for T-shirts. Um, I know that there was a company doing some wrist brands as well. You oh, know, cool. people are trying to find creative ways to kind of reuse strings. So. It, like Thierry says, it can be done, but it's a little bit more difficult if you have a, a hybrid in there and one's natural gut. And yeah, the stringers are asking the, the stringers, <laughs> the US Open when they're stringing 7,000 rackets to start splitting strings. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I'm not putting that request in. I'm not going to one mocky and asking him for that, but I'll leave that to Thierry to, to, to yeah. ask him. <laughs> no, I think uh, also uh, it has to be done by local communities. Uh, if a few um, people ca can collect tennis balls and then maybe some they can bring it to uh, dog schools or do uh, scred it and, and do something uh, something else with it. But I think it has to be done locally. Even, even for tennis string, uh, I know uh, some people make uh, wrist brands of it and mm -hmm. so they go to shops and collect uh, the string. So I think we sh should be concentrating on, on that and not on, 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 a, on a global thing. I donate all my used tennis balls to dogs. I love dogs, but I, <laughs> that's what I do. I leave them out the front door and then I send a message on my local community, come and get your free balls. So there's a lot of Wilson uh, dog consumers in, in my local community. Same. Even here, I'll go through our basket and pull out all the dead balls and I just leave a big box that says free dog balls and they're gone within day a day. Yeah, yeah. they're gone. <laughs> yeah. We take it for granted as tennis players. Like our dogs always have tennis balls everywhere, but then you don't realize that people that never played tennis are like always like, oh, you have an extra tennis ball? And you're like, really? Do you want 10? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And that's actually a really good reminder too is to start where you can. It doesn't have to be this massive massive change but do the things that you can control I'm, I'm lately like preaching that a lot lately control what you can control so if if it's recycling your tennis balls or you know switching to a recycled material in your rackets I mean it's the little things and now you know that this packaging is more than half or more than half anyways <laughs> You guys reduce packaging by over 50%. That's how it meant to come out. And um, the factory that you're buying this from is using solar power and has bees. I mean, like, that's so cool. I wish I knew all this before. Is there anything else that we need to know about Luxlawn and the Wilson partnership? The honey is very good. So <laughs> next time I come to you guys, bring I'll bring some. the honey in. Yes, that's just, so cool. I will bring some. The honey is very, very good off the roof. So, uh, yeah. I love that. Uh, yeah, look, no, I think we're always trying to trying to do new stuff, whether it be, um, I know you recently had Michael on um, talking about the shift. Yeah. Um, but stuff with our bumper guards, you know, how we're using different material um, in, in that. And then we look at our butt caps, you know, we look at our bags and how we can use different materials in that. So, you know, there's a lot, a lot that we're trying to do. Um, 
as as both Wilson then and I latch on. But yeah, it's to Tierra's point. I think it's a good you know the, the small steps. All of a sudden they they add up to big steps. You know if like I say if if every brand starts to to come out not every brand but you know a lot of brands come out with recycled string. It makes it makes the world a better place. For so sure. um, yeah, we're trying to do small small actions but always at the forefront is the performance of the product as well that has to be has to be functioning it has to the the consumer has to be at the heart of the decisions we make um and that's from a performance perspective but then also from a from a an environment and and a bettering of the sport so those are kind of the ethos is that we we work to it i think wilson and luxor nice Terry, do you have anything to add? No, I think it was <laughs> very well explained by, by by Joe. But it's it's true for us. Uh, the the quality of the product is is the first thing we think about, eh? and it's not because we use a recycled material. The product can be a, a little bit worse, or no, it has to be a good product. It has to be a Luxlon standard and Wilson standards, and I think uh, also Wilson is thinking about this uh, for, for Wilson it's also important to be to have a good product uh, and if it's recyclable that's an extra but the product is always uh, first nice and don't take it from us like go look at the reviews from people that aren't affiliated with tennis warehouse <laughs> that have been trying these strings and go read how they are loving it and it's been amazing feedback so far. I'm really excited to see it get even farther into the market and more people playing with it because it's, for me, I think it's such a cool thing. I, I said this kind of in the video review. I grew up in the beaches of California and don't know anything but recycling. Um, like used to love just driving by the, I still do, <laughs> driving by the water, watching the ocean and quickly learned about the hazardous materials that get pushed out there and being able to, you know, control it you can control and make small steps to hopefully saving the environment rather than destroying it is so, it's just really cool and you feel like you're doing your part and i'm really excited and i can't wait to see what else you guys have and i think it's amazing so thanks for being awesome <laughs> thank you and, and just uh, for, the, for the listeners and those who have commented we've we've used your your comments and your feedback and and you know so thank you to you guys and, and your community because that helps us, you know, those insights and, and it's about listening to, to what the tennis player wants. And, and, and often you guys in particular, you, you help with that, um, your big tennis community that you have. So I used it here in a meeting yesterday. I used some of the comments and the feedback. And, um, so, so thanks to all those people commenting and, and all feedback's good. Like not everyone's going to love it. Some people will love it more, et cetera. But, you know, um, I was asked, do I take things personally? <laughs> Maybe a little bit now and again, a little bit. Um, but at Wilson, you know, we're always striving to be better. So all feedback is good, you know, um, and we take it. And it's always the consumer that we're, we're, we're focusing on. Awesome. Well, I mean, we could talk about Luxon all day because we didn't even get to talk about like the history of Luxon and how it became so popular and all of the things. So we might have to do another episode in the future if you guys are up for it. But I appreciate your time today. Definitely. We, I, I can only speak. We, we, we love working with you guys. And yeah, I know it's taken a while to do this podcast. So, um, yeah, I, I've been traveling uh, and, and so has Thierry. So, um, but yeah, any, any time it's, it's great to, to talk about products and bounce things around. Um, so yeah. We'd love to come back. Awesome. And so, I hope Thierry wants I to come back after his mic is uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yes. I think, uh, in a few months, uh, when we have, again exciting news we should uh, do this again awesome i love it and i want to meet your tennis robot do you like can i just ask does he have a name or does it have a name i knew you were gonna ask <laughs> <laughs> I, knew. Like, I need to know secretly <laughs> no we just call him bot 
<laughs> nice. Okay, that works. Well, now we could be called Michelle. It could be Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I don't know about we that. We could do that. I wish I were a robot some days on the court. Yeah. Like, no emotions, just hit. <laughs> I have all the, the emotions. Hours and no, don't get tired. Oh, my gosh. Man, I'm feeling it today. I'm like, Thursday, the body's a little tired. Oh, man. <laughs> well, thanks, you guys, for joining me. This was an awesome chat, and I hope everyone out there listening goes and checks out Lux Salon Eco Power and Eco Rough and happy hitting.